my area of research encompasses several areas, nutrition, food studies, public health, and I kind of look at it as a scientist and a sociologist. And I'm interested in the way nutrition science is used to sell products and also as to encourage people to figure out what to eat. So I'm kind of interested in how science, business, and society interact around people's food choices. Today, obesity is the single most important public health nutrition problem in the United States. Um, people have far too much food, they're eating too much food for the amount of activity that they're engaged in, and it's just become a huge problem. Um, and this puts the food industry in just an impossible bind, because food companies are businesses. Their job is to sell more food, not less. But if you want to do something about obesity, you have to get people to eat eat less and move more. And it turns out eating less is very bad for business. So here we have food companies that are just desperately trying to figure out how they can appear to be part of the solution, not the problem. And so they're all doing things to make it look as if they're selling healthier foods and not marketing to children. But in practice, they ha their businesses, they have to sell more food. And if they can't market to children this way, they'll figure out some other way to do it. Well, food companies know how to market to children, and they want to market to children for three reasons. Uh, the first reason is brand loyalty. The idea is if a kid learns what a food brand is, that child will be consuming that brand throughout life. The second is called the pester factor. If kids, uh, what, what marketers want to do is to get kids to pester their parents to buy the products, they're really good at it too. And you see the results of that uh, anytime you're in a car with a two-year-old and drive by a McDonald's and that child who you swear has never watched television and has never been in a McDonald's knows what the Golden Arches are. But the third one is the one that makes me most disturbed and I find most insidious and that is the idea that you want to convince kids that they're supposed to eat kids' food. They're supposed to eat food specially made for them in packages with toys, with cartoons on the packages. And they're not supposed to be eating that boring food that their parents eat. And so what that does is establish kids as the arbiters of their own food choices rather than parents. And it undermines parental authority around food choices. And I think that's reason alone to look at food marketing as something that really should be stopped. If parents don't want their kids eating junk food, they they can't have junk food in the house. It's just as simple as that. Yes, the kids will eat it when they go visit their friends, but the parents can say, this isn't something that we do in our house. It's just our house, we do things differently. And then they must teach children how to critically evaluate commercials and to learn the difference between marketing and education. Um, children under the age of 8, 10, 12, sometimes older, really can't tell the difference. And so it's very important to teach them to listen for messages that are trying to sell them something um, and to understand that there's a commercial, there's something commercial going on in here and then to resist it. And kids are very good about learning that. And once you teach kids how to appreciate real food, and I think the best way to do that is to teach kids to cook, um, then kids will learn where food comes from, will learn how to taste and experience different kinds of flavors and textures, and will think that fast food doesn't taste as good. I think what we're seeing is a new social movement around food. There are so many ways in which people are saying, we don't think the current food system is healthy for either people or the planet, and they're doing something about it. And this includes things like the slow food movement, like the locally grown movement, the organic movement, uh, the stop marketing to kids movement, and of course the school food movement where there's a sm there are small local entities where parents have gone into the schools and said, we just don't want our kids eating like this. We want our kids eating better. And going into the school, changing the lunches, changing the meals program, working with other parents, teachers, and the school food service directors to have kids have real food. And you go into a school like this, and it's quite astonishing. Do the kids eat the food? Of course they will. The idea that they won't eat anything but junk food is just absolutely false. If you treat them respectfully and treat food respectfully and explain how good it tastes and how much fun it is, kids get it right away.